So, Max, listen. I mean, hit me, Tom. I, I am going to hit you because I'm going to hit you with something good, dude. I want to tell you this. I know that we've had a, listen, we've had a lot of guests on the show. I mean, we've done 50-plus uh, episodes. We've had some extraordinary guests. And usually it's business as usual because that's what we are here. We're business as usual. We're very business-oriented. We're very serious people. Well, no, we're not. But we, we've had some guests, I think, from time to time that really – strike our heart that like it's not just like oh we're going to be talking to this actor or we're going to be talking to this director or we're talking to this writer producer whatnot a, a, a couple of times a year somebody comes on that it's like more than just having a guest am i correct are you telling me what i think you're telling I, me are we about to talk to who i think we're about to talk to absolutely because i remember watching this fucker on old cky videos <laughs> oh really back that far oh yeah dude but listen, I've seen you get excited about Michael Berryman. I've seen you get excited about Pat Healy. How fuck... I mean, you basically... You could live, breathe, eat, sleep Larry Clark and Harmony Kyrine movies. I mean, how fucking exciting is it right now to talk to Leo Fitzpatrick? Well, I'll tell you something, Tom. In uh, 1995, I was working as a street performer at Epcot Center. And they had an art theater out there called the Enzian. And I went out there one night because I was so miserable working as a street performer for Epcot, and I saw this film, Kids. It tore my asshole lining. And I'm watching this little fucking punk with gnarly teeth, black hair, with a skateboard and a big giant t-shirt, and I'm like, who is this kid? He's blowing my fucking head off. Dude. And I'll tell you something else. I have followed Fitzpatrick forever. Me too. And every time I see him, like on Sons of Anarchy right. or Carnival or... Damn, I watch storytelling. I only saw it for the first time a, a couple months ago. What? And, and I'm telling everyone about Fitzpatrick, and no one knows who the hell I'm talking about. Well, listen, he's worked with Larry Clark. He's worked with Todd Solondz. I mean, listen... The one thing, you and I are both big fans of Sons of Anarchy, Max. The only thing that Kurt Sutter has, o only, like, the only thing he's ever fumbled on that show is just putting this dude on for, for two episodes. <laughs> I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I, I say, fuck all this Larry Clark shit. We should just talk about Leo's two episode arc in Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> Leo always has two episode arcs on shows. Not true. I th dude, he ran uh, on the wire for a long time, right, Leo? Yeah. <laughs> He, he was he was like on 14, 15 episodes. Can I interrupt? Is this introduction over yet? I don't know whether to be scared, flattered, or what. <laughs> like, Definitely. We're just eating your balls right now. <laughs> no, because you say really nice things, and then you throw in fucked up teeth, and this is <laughs> uh, I just don't know where this is going. Hey, listen, Leo, hey, I you saw... consider handsome in your old age. Well, great. I got about 20 years left in me. I'll enjoy it. But Max, listen, I saw kids, believe it or not, opening night in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. All right. I heard about this movie and I'm like, I have to see this. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't know how I was in this theater with like six other people on opening night to see kids. And I saw it with two chicks, my girlfriend at the time and her really hot puerto rican friend and we watch this movie and after the movie's over these two girls are just talking about how much they were in love with leo fitzpatrick's chin they're like that telly is just so hot and i'm just watching this movie and i'm like listen this guy's a scumbag i'm like how how could you find anything uh, at all attractive about this character leo they they loved you they loved I you they thought you were beautiful it's because I'm from West Orange, New Jersey. That's they probably felt the connection. They felt the connection. <laughs> That's right. That's right, man. Listen, kids, it's on our plate tonight. We're talking Larry Clark. We're talking kids. Uh, I mean, this is. I mean, you're 16, 17 years old at the time, dude, and you're skateboarding in New York. And for some reason or another, you come across uh, a 50 year old Larry Clark and a teenage Harmony Crime. I mean, how, I mean, just can you tell our listeners how, I mean, how this chance meeting happened? All right. So this is, this is how it happened. So basically, Larry, all right. 
It, it's a long story, so I'll try to make it brief. Larry <laughs> knew about five years, I'd say, before making kids that he wanted to make this film. But he knew as a 50-year-old guy, he had no chance in getting in with teenagers, especially New York teenagers who thought he was a narc or whatever. You, you know, go. so so um, he was friends with this photographer named Tobin Yeland, who's a great skateboard photographer and great photographer. And Tobin kind of like introduced him to all of the skateboard community and he got like a pass. So, so I actually met Larry when I was 14. And... I had always wanted an, another kid to play telly. There was actually two tellies before myself. And the one kid got too old or he had puberty or something. The second kid's mom wouldn't let him do it. <laughs> and then it came around to me. And I think it was just out of desperation that they, they went with me. And also, Chloe is another last minute pick. Chloe yeah, was. I, yeah. Also- I was reading that, that, that they were well, I mean, they were ready to go in a totally different direction. And, yeah, uh, with, um, this actress, Mia Kirshner. Yeah, so, and, you know, it's amazing because, they're, Max, there's like four, I mean, the, listen, Clark basically found four, I mean, four young stars. He found Leo, he found uh, uh, Chloe, Rosario Dawson, and uh, what's his name? John, John Abrams, too, right? Yeah, yeah, Johnny. I mean, all of them have gone on to, like, I mean, amazing careers. And, I mean, he just picks these kids out of the hat, man, basically off the streets. Right, Leo? Yeah, 100%. Like, Larry, I think, you know, the misconception there is that people don't understand Larry's relationship with teenagers. But basically, he's, like, the first adult in every teenager's life that, like, gives him respect. Right. And, And so teenagers respect that respect you know like they're like whoa this guy thinks i'm not a a fuck up or this or that so so he forms these bonds with like every film he does i'd say he hangs out with the kids for about two years prior and that's like taking photos and like still photography and so by the time you get to uh, shoot the film you're already used to him kind of taking photos and being there and sort of directing like his films are actually a pretty long process, like with What's Up Rockers and films like that. He really loves all those kids. You yeah. Know? Like, he's not in, in – other people think it's, like, exploitive, but I've known Yeah, him. of course. Yeah, and that's – to me, that's a real shame. I mean, they're totally missing the point because, I mean, a teenager – I mean, like, you're, like, basically you're telling me, I mean – like there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty. There's a tremendous amount of lack of respect during those years in, in one's life. And you're basically saying that Larry, when he works with these kids, I mean, he's, I mean, he he's listening. He's working with them as as if they're they're his equal, right? Yeah, like Larry. It's I'm I'm still really close with Larry, and uh, and so I see him about once a week, and uh, like the the star of What's Up Rockers. Larry basically like, fucking adopts these kids. And, and uh, I noticed the other week Larry has a Jonathan tattoo. And that's the star of What's Up Rockers. Like, that's how much he loves these people, that he'll tattoo their name on himself. That's, what, that's the uh, at, Jonathan Velasquez? Yeah, at yeah. 72 years old, Larry's doing this. <laughs> 72, Max. So, like, you know, it's not like some bullshit. He doesn't exploit people. He doesn't just use them and then, like, get rid of them. Like these are lifelong friendships right. that, that, you know, and, and I think adults just don't understand that in itself. Like why are you hanging out with teenagers? Like, well, cause teenagers are fucking awesome. Like it's like, you know, it's, I think the adults are the, the ones who are fucked up for not understanding that he actually respects these kids. Right. And he like gives them credit for fucking having fun where adults are like, well, you're an adult now. You're not supposed to have fun. <laughs> sort of a fucking thing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, Larry, I think his, in his mind, he still wants to be a teenager. His body just doesn't let him. I think we all do, man. And I think that most of us are just masquerading as adults. You know, I mean, we should never lose that that youthful feeling. You know, I mean, it's a shame that that's the pattern that we've basically created as human beings. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, I mean, it's terrible. Hey, listen, let me... Uh, 
ask you uh, a little bit more about kids, man. Uh, mm-hmm. This script uh, that Harmony wrote, I mean, it's <laughs> – listen, I mean, you, when you're watching this movie, especially for the first time, I mean, you're basically – you, I mean, you think you're watching a documentary. I mean, that's how real, that's how street-like, that's how down-to-earth this script is. Let me ask you this, Leo. I mean, was, I mean, what, I mean, were you guys basically going off, off the script a lot? Was there a lot of improvisation? I mean, was Harmony's script tight enough where, they, you know, they were just like, hey, listen, just read what's on the page? I mean, t- tell, me yeah. a li- tell me a little bit about that. Well, so basically, I mean, this question comes up all the time. You know, because it, it, I mean, that's why it's a good movie. It's because you can't tell whether it's fucking real or make believe. Um, um, but I'll say this: like, so ninety-five percent of what you see on the screen was written by Harmony, and that was Larry's fucking genius. Was he came up with the story? He knew maybe he was too old to write it, so he found Harmony, who was nineteen at the time, hanging out with everybody, and he asked him can you write this? And Harmony being Harmony was like, of course I can write this. You know, so um, so 95% of what's in the film was actually on the page. The only scenes I can say there's like maybe two scenes that are like improv. The, the kids on the couch was improv. Uh, like, when, they're, when they're smoking the joint at the party? Yeah. yeah. That was that was filmed because that was that was happening. Like, you know what's really weird because that scene on the couch, it, it, it's fucked up that you say that, man. Because that scene on the couch is that has Harmony Karine written all over it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I mean, I mean, if you look at like you know, especially like the, like the kind of shit he does in Gummo, like that scene is like right out of Gummo, and it's amazing that you say that. That was, I mean, that that wasn't uh, Karine writing that, man. That amazes me. No, but like. But see, the, I think the genius in what Larry and Harmony did was, uh, you know, obviously there was a blueprint of structure, but they let it get loose and they, they weren't like dictating necessarily what happened. Like there was shit that happened that no one could think of, you know, that was just like, oh, wow, we have these 12 year old kids smoking weed on a couch. Like <laughs> that, they were just doing, I think they were doing that, you know, obviously before the scene started and then Larry Harmon is like, Hey, maybe we should film this. You right. Know? Because I mean, he, he was letting you kids loose, right? I mean, you were hanging out doing some, you know, drinking and, and whatnot. Well, I was sober. Right. Then. Well, your character was sober. Yeah. So like, um, but well, you know, like, yeah, it, it was, it was a mixed bag because, you know, you still need people to show up on time, right. not hung over. Like, but you're dealing with 16 year old kids. And for the first time, and I think pretty much all our lives, uh, like we, we were able to like take out, uh, advances on our paycheck. So by the time the movie ended, nobody actually got a check because we were taking out $40 and blowing it. And, right. you know, over the course of a month, like, right. so yeah. like, so, so there was like, it was a little sketchy giving people freedom. At that point, you know, because people would disappear and you'd be like, well, you know, and nobody knew the movie was ever going to turn into anything. Legendary. I like, mean, it, yeah, it's legendary it's like, at this point. It was basically summer camp. Like it was, you know, like nobody thought the movie would ever come out. We didn't know who the fuck necessarily Gus Van Sant was or right. Carrie Woods or Miramax. Like everybody was basically just doing it for Larry as like a like yeah we don't got anything else to do but we never thought it would be a, a real movie was it van zant's involvement that pushed i mean that pushed this into into production i think so yeah it had to have been i mean like i know like because larry comes from a, a still photography background and he has a lot of fans out there and i know gus van sant likes uh, a lot of his photography and like Larry's an artist first before director. So he already had like a lot of street cred, you know, like he shot a guy, like he's not like just some bullshit kid coming out of college, you know, like right. <laughs> he's already lived a life that people totally. knew about. And they were like, even though it's not traditional, they're like, 
He seems like a good investment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. That's awesome. Hey, listen, I'm going to turn you over to Max in a second because I'm sure he's salivating over there. He's a big fan. But yeah. uh, let, let me just ask you this real quick about kids. I mean, after this movie came out, Leo, I mean, is it, is it, is it at all true that you – I mean, you. I mean, you. You've been threatened, right, by by people who have watched uh, this movie who thought that this was a documentary, and they really thought that this this was a kid that went around behaving in such manner. Well, no, but you know, see, the the fucked up thing is, so after the movie came out, we all just went back to our regular lives, and I worked at a skateboard shop, and so fucking, I was an easy target, you know, like people would just they knew I was in the film. And that, you know, they knew where to find me. And so, yeah, I would get threats all the time. But my favorite, my favorite review kind of compliment ever I ever, ever got is the year after sun, uh, the year after the film came out, we went to the, uh, I don't know, fucking Independent Spirit Awards or some shit. <laughs> Ebert. Roger Ebert came yeah. up to me and said, when I watched that film, I wanted to punch you in the fucking yeah. face. That's how I <laughs> felt, dude. I hated... I, I, you're just a really good actor. And I thought, wow, that's... I mean, this guy watches movies for a living. Yeah. And he actually wanted to punch me in the face. That's and kind this of, dude is telling you that, Leo, and then you fucking quit acting for a few years. Well, no. Well, see, the trick... Well, who is that in the background telling me I'm wrong? I want to know who that is. Somebody's like, listen, no. No, you did not. Who was that? That's my fiance who's supposed to be in the bedroom while I do this. Ooh. <laughs> what is she like? Is she wearing hot little panties right now? Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> How do you not know? Because it's fucking six o'clock here. <laughs> What do you think we just I love how the fiancés always get involved. What does he ask? No, is this when you had the accident where a drunk driver hit you and you couldn't be in a Robert Redford movie? Right. The last, last castle. castle. Yeah, with Gandolfini, too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot to change Gandolfini. Yeah. No, well, that was that's actually Larry Clark's fault as well. <laughs> Please so tell. Larry's influenced my life in many ways. But uh, so basically that car accident... I was going to do Last Castle, and Larry was shooting, the fuck, maybe it was What's Up Rockers, or one of those films. Well, around that? that time, it was, yeah, pro, well, it was and, yeah, post-Bully, right? I mean, you'd already done Bully. Yeah. yeah. And so I flew, because Larry was like, you'll always, like, every movie I do, you're going to be in. And so, uh, so I flew to L.A. to do a cameo in this film. And I get there, and from the airport, we go to a friend's birthday party. And it's probably like the only time in my life I left a party early, where I was like, you know what? I just flew in. I'm, I don't feel like hanging out at a bar. And I leave the bar, get hit by a car, and uh, basically was stuck in a hospital for a week with doctors telling me that they might amputate my leg. And... Uh, but after a week, I checked myself out. Like, I knew they said eventually I wasn't going to lose my leg. And, uh, and I do, I, I seriously, like, was fucked up. But, um, but even with my fucked up leg, I shot a cameo for that movie, and Larry didn't use it. So, what the fuck? Disappointment. Yeah, I mean, hello, I still showed up to work. Even <laughs> yeah, dude, totally. I had a bum leg and, you know, eight stitches in my face. But I still, like, I'm professional at least, you know. Hey, listen, Max, I don't want to hog Leo. I mean, we, we, you know. Yeah, why are you hogging Leo, man? I know, I'm totally hogging. I'm like, I'm ready to move on to Bully, but I know we, I, we can't take up all, all of this dude's night. Max, why don't you go to town on him, man? Do your thing. Oh, jeez. Hey, Leo, so... I haven't read Just Born Dead. I only just heard about it. Uh -huh. But it seems to me like you have been through a lot of shit. No. You got hit by the drunk driver. You got your leg fucked up. And then I started to think about your peers. Justin Pierce, who played Casper, hung himself. Uh -huh. Harold Hunter died. Yeah. You lost Brad Renfro, your co-star and Bully. I mean, you yeah. have been through a lot of shit. And in an interview I saw, you mentioned the fact that the 20s were your darkest period of life. And that your book, Just Born Dead, was about letting go of the dark. 
a lot of people accuse me of being a really dark fucker, and a lot of people are telling me to let go of the dark. I don't know how to do that. So is it doing it through your art because you opened this gallery and you did a book and you're always having these exhibits? How did you let go of it, and did you really let go of it? No, I mean, it'll always be there for sure. And I'm not no fucking, like, hippie. Like, you know, <laughs> I think... I think if anyone makes it through their 20s, it's amazing. Like, the 20s are rough, like, for anybody. Like, that's when you're at your most fucked up. Because you kind of think you're an adult, but you're still pretty much a fuck up. And so, like, so that's, that's what I meant about that. But I feel like my problem, which I'm sure is a lot of people's problems, is, like, when you're younger, you're cynical, right? But there's still a bit of humor to it. But if you start playing that too long, then you actually just become cynical and fucked up. That's what I've done. What? That's what I've done. Yeah, you become like, you know, it's not funny anymore. You're just like a jerk. You know, you're just like that guy who sits around and complains and nobody wants to hang out with that guy. Who wants to hang out with that dude, Max? Yeah. (laughs) But that's me. It's like finding the about like, yeah, you know, like I always say that, like, you know, growing up, my family did not have a lot of money. And so, like, basically we turn like how broke we were into like jokes, you know, like, like for Christmas, we would like wrap up like somebody's left shoe and give it to him. And so it was kind of like <laughs> funny. But then, like, eventually you kind of just become dark and the funniness sort of gets weeded out and you're like, oh, fuck, like, I'm miserable. And so it's a slippery... Yeah, but how do you shake that? How did you shake that? Are you really a happy guy? No, not at all. <laughs> no, I think I think what's good is staying busy. Yeah, he's, yeah, he has some success, you know. I mean, that has to be... I mean, that has... No, but, like, in your eyes, I have success. In my eyes, I have zero success. Like, I got to keep busy so so I don't focus on how little I've done, you know. So. What do you really want to do, Leo? Do you really want to run a gallery? Because you, you treat acting like it's just, uh, you said something about it being like an accountant going to work, okay? I'm sure a lot of actors... A lot of them really say that. We've had people on the show that. that say shit like that. Well, no, all, you, know? you know, I'm fucking 37. Like, you know, a job's a job. And, and it's not working in a coal mine. Like, trust me, I know that. But, like, you know, uh, I show up, I do the best job I can do, but I'm not, like, one of these fucking delusional 22-year-old kids who get off the bus in Hollywood and think everything's going to work out. You know, it's like... But, no, you evolved into this really artistic dude, and now you're giving other artists a chance. Is that is that your contribution at, at this point? Well... For me, that's always been there. I just, other people just didn't see it. And now other people can see it. But, you know, like, my gallery is a losing venture. Like, we, we're going to lose at the end of it. Like, we know we're losing. But New York sucks so much now because the prices of rent are so high that there's no creativity being brought to New York. I mean, there is, but it's, it's getting harder because rent is so fucking crazy. Uh, and so this is sort of a stand that me and me and my friend are doing, but it's at the end of the day. Like I'm not, I don't want to run an art gallery. Like I, I, I enjoy the process of working with artists, but you know, if I was in it for the money, it would just be another way to not get a real job. So you're saying that it's so fucking expensive in New York City that, like, if you were young and you were hungry and you wanted to to do your artwork, it's it's almost impossible. At yeah, I would, I would. There's no way. I mean, even Bushwick in Brooklyn, it's just too expensive. And you know, like, uh, you know, somebody like I, I forget what I was reading, but somebody was talking about like the classes in New York and. And the fact that all the homeless are gone. And who's after the homeless? Like, the weirdos are next. And eventually, it'll just be like a dry, boring, kind of just a city of bankers, you know? Like, because nobody else can afford it. Which yeah. Is- it's like we're living in a world where it's a crime to be poor. 
Yeah, which is so damaged because poor people are the most inventive and like they'll like put on a show at least. They're the know. fucking workers, man. You know, they're the people that make shit. Whether it's art or or a can of soup, you you know what I'm saying? Like they, I just think shit. at least they like bring a. a the, let's say they add colors to the rainbow. Like if the rainbow was shit brown and that's all it was, <laughs> that, that is what it would be, you know. But you need different colors in the rainbow. Definitely, man. Got to mix. It hey, up Leo, it. can I ask you? How did you hook up with the Westchester crew with Bam and all them? And uh, did you ever think that? Uh, Oh, I could have been a jackass in those jackass movies. No, no, no. I mean, because Bam, like those Westchester guys, that was really insular. Like that was their crew. And uh, but you know, back when I was a skateboarder when I was a teenager, you were kind of a loser for being a skateboarder. Like you weren't getting girls. Like it wasn't cool. It was pre jackass, pre all that shit. And so like. There was sort of a, not like a closeness, that doesn't sound right, but like every skateboarder knew each other. And that could be all the way down to Atlanta and Florida. Like the whole East Coast knew each other because there was only, you know, one skateboarder from every town, so on and so forth. And so I would see Bam at these skate parks in Pennsylvania because that's where you'd have to go to like go skateboarding. And so we were... We were I like I knew Bam when he was a chubby fucking eleven year old. Like, <laughs> like before He's all, back to being chubby now. Yeah, yeah. But like before all the you know, the CKY and the Jack like CKY and the Big Brother videos basically became Jackass. But I knew Bam like years prior to that. And actually after kids I ended up living in London because I didn't like being in New York and Bam came and stayed with me for like two weeks or something. Wow. Then, you know, and still when I see Bam, like we don't, I don't have Bam's phone number, but when we see each other, it's sort of that idea of like, oh yeah, remember when we were all like little. Dude, remember like the past when you and I totally flipped them ollies and you went out on that fucking cart? There you go. <laughs> now, did you know Dunn, obviously? Yeah. Uh, what was it like super- you and Dunn died? I mean, it just sucks. Like, he's such a nice guy. Like, he's just, like, 100% honestly nice. And so when you realize, like, I don't, I don't know necessarily kind of the what happened. I know there was a car crash, obviously, and this and that. But, like, we were like, fuck, like, that, it just sucks. Like, why couldn't some bad... But, Leo, you get a lot of bad news. In your life, you get a lot of bad yeah. news. A lot of people said, "Hey, Leo, all these people died." Hey, Leo, this happened. I mean, how do you absorb all that? I mean, it's weird to think of life otherwise. Like that's just what the fuck happens, you know? Like it's not. I mean, at this point, like I've sort of lost count. But like, what are you gonna do? You can't like. You got to be psyched that you knew those people when you did, and like uh, they were in your life a little bit, and then. You know, yeah, it's a bummer they're not around, but, like, like if I died, I don't want other people to be sitting around being like, oh. You know, like, <laughs> I want them to fucking be, like, psyched that we hung out and then be like, fuck, I'm going to... Fucking A, celebrate, right? Something. Celebrate the life. I, I think you have a healthy attitude. Have you skateboarded lately? Uh, the last time I skateboarded was last... Wait, I think I even know the date. Do you know the date? Oh, my God. It was, like, August... Fifth of last year, <laughs> Max. He's asking his fiance the, the, the date, the last time. Uh, Look, at his fiance for no, when the last reason she knows because I broke she my owns phone. your ass totally, man. <laughs> What's her name, Leo? Chrissy. Chrissy. Is she- Chrissy. Leo, you've totally let this woman take over everything. Everything. Now. She's there. She's right there right now, making sure you get the right answers. No, wait. Let me tell you the reason why. Is because on August fifth or whatever. <laughs> Because she's not thrilled that I go skateboarding at my age. Uh, but, she's not. My wife won't let me ride a motorcycle. from the hospital saying I broke my collarbone <laughs> because I was being an idiot and I went skateboarding. And, you know, in my mind, I'm still a teenager, so I can still do the tricks I was doing as a teenager. But when you fall, you fall like almost a 40-year-old man. And, like, you know, you lose – you know, when you're a teenager, you can, like, roll out of things and get out of – 
situations, but at my age, you know, your bones just break. Yeah. And so I broke my arm skating last year. And that was the last time I skateboarded and I gave away that skateboard. I think it's cursed, but I just, ordered, <laughs> but I just ordered some new skateboards. So I'll be skateboarding this summer. Hey, listen, we're talking with uh, Leo Fitzpatrick, the star of kids, uh, Max, uh, you know, it's almost time to say goodbye. Do you have anything else for, for Leo before we let him oh, go? Oh, come on. Really? I know I can sit here and talk to this guy at 10 o'clock, but it's not fair to him. He's got a life. Back to him. Yeah, he's not like us. We got nothing to do. He's got shit All right, to I have do. one more for Leo. All right, a really, a really hot chick I know, my friend, she wrote, she's never seen kids, saw you on Sons of Anarchy, but that's her only Leo Fitzpatrick point of reference. She says you're a, quote, cutie, end quote. For someone in that situation... What do you want to be known for? What do you want people to know you as? I mean, a cutie, obviously. Just a cutie. <laughs> that works for you, right? I mean, who, uh, yeah. I mean, you're a pretty handsome fucker. You've had this great career. Look, do you, even though you have the fiance, sweet Chrissy there, is she threatened by, like, chicks always throwing themselves yeah, at you? I mean, you've... Man. Have I, you enjoyed the fruits of your labor over the years? Yeah, right. Like, Come on. <laughs> No, tr I mean, first off, you went from saying I fucked up teeth to now calling me a cutie. There's, a, I don't know, I don't, I haven't aged that gracefully. But uh, my but friend called you a cutie. I started out by saying you had fucked up teeth. Now I'm saying you're red hot. You're you're rocking the beard with the gray elevens in the beard. Yeah, but wait, you're fine. You, wait, let me tell you about Sons of Anarchy. Really quick. All right. Let's talk about Sons of Anarchy, dude. Do it. Do it. Do it. So I'm as confused about the Sons of Anarchy thing as you guys are. (laughs) Yeah, you were a prospect, dude. They could have rolled with you for for seasons. First off, I was supposed to originally talk about play half sack. And that never happened. Half sack? Oh. They we, fucked up, Max. I've that dude awesome. wound up killing an old lady. You wouldn't have done that. Well, hey, I don't know the guy. But we've been talking for years about me being on that show. And so when I got the call, I was like, okay, well, now it's going to happen, right? And so I get the call, and I go to L.A., I fly home, and then I go back to L.A., and I kind of, like, run away from the show or whatever. But I thought, like, something was going to come of that, you know, like – you know, why bother spending all this money flying me back and forth and this and that? And nothing came of it. So I'm as confused as you guys. Like, in my... So view, it's not over yet. <laughs> well, I, so think it kind of yet. I think it kind of is. I don't expect... I mean, maybe I'll be in the finale with... Dude, like, the series... Fin- Leo, the series finale, dude. I'm telling you, they'll bring, they'll bring <laughs> Shepard back. Leo comes back. Yeah, Shepard yeah. will tie everything together. But so, like, trust me, I'm as confused as everybody else about that storyline. I don't know why it existed. I don't know how it benefited the show or how it benefited me. But, like, but it's pretty conf- – and then also, I, why did I play a wigger? Like, why was I, like, all <laughs> out on that show? Yeah. Like, that was weird. Like, that – no prospect's going to last long when he's – Wearing baggy pants. I don't know if your depth was recognized there at that point. Do you think you're an enigmatic figure at this point? Like, are you... I mean, if you could define that, I could tell you. Thanks. To define it. Well, <laughs> people are like a very silence. interested in what you're about. I mean, you, you still got movies coming out. You're, you're kind of a renaissance man at this point, right? No, I mean, I'm just treading water, man. Okay. I'm just like, you know, I don't think about it i just you know what is your drink of choice like do you get fucked up do you i know you don't do drugs right but you said something about being a pussy with hard liquor but is beer your drink of choice yeah i've had two budweiser's during this interview oh okay good (laughs) (laughs) no the weird thing is is that i only drink beer that's my whole thing it's just beer how do you drink beer and stay so fucking skinny that doesn't make any sense you don't have a big gut wait I don't. Uh oh. I don't. Is that the fiance? Yeah, that, she's answering for him now, Max. What's she say? Well, you know the problem is I don't have a computer either, so I'm using hers to do this, and so I don't Does know. Does she want to get on Facebook? Feel it or what? But like, but she's she's overseeing this. 
Because like, I'm kind of like computer illiterate. Like, I don't really know how to use Skype. Can I ask her some questions? Yeah, go for it. Chrissy, come on in here for a second. Chrissy, come, come here, honey. In here. We're yeah, not get, a, get, a, get, get closer, please. Like, join, join the circle. Hi. Hey, Chrissy, what's happening? What's up? Nada. I, We're real. talking to Leo, man. I can give you the real answers now. <laughs> there you go. Hit me. <laughs> Max, do it. <laughs> He's really skinny because he doesn't eat. Why doesn't he eat? You don't cook for him? He eats very picky, like a child. Like, pizza, one meal a day. <laughs> uh, he's yeah. like a wild, like, what did they have? Peter Pan had the lost, he's like a lost boy, isn't he? But like a lost man. He actually looks, I think he looks younger now than, I mean, minus the beard, but he looks pretty young. Because I'm pickled. He pickled him. Now, when you look into his eyes, because he has very magnetic eyes, is that the first thing that makes you kind of moist down there, or what happens? See, you wanted to get in on that. <laughs> um, he's what, ho- it, what quality about Leo rocks you the most in your underpants? He is hilarious. Like, by- he is funny, he is, isn't he? Yeah, he I know. He's kind of self-deprecating. I know a lot of people, and he's the funniest person I've ever met. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I mean, I keep, like notes in my phone of like funny things he says oh my god i just went on to imdb chrissy is he wearing a smith shirt is he a smith's fan oh my god don't get me started is he a fucking morrissey fanatic he, have you gotten the new johnny marr album yet oh, leo it's fucking great i mean i have told him that he is the king of the hipsters like he invented being a hipster and he gets oh. so mad about that he doesn't like hipster chrissy no no I'm calling that yeah but he's listening to morrissey he's probably listening to robert smith and no, Division. He's, he's a guy in pain tom i know but those guys are clowns you want that's pain? like old, that's like old leo he likes reggae he don't pretty much only listens to like he likes reggae he's like listening reggae. to desmond decker <laughs> Jimmy Cliff now. Brown. You know who Danny Brown is? I don't know. Like, the more obscure, the better. He's very highbrow, lowbrow. I see, I see. How long have you two been together, and how did you meet? Five years. Um, That's a long time. We had a lot of mutual friends. Wait, this is now about you. Um, I kind <laughs> of, like, would see him around and be like, oh, it's that guy that was in Kids. Like, he probably thinks he's so fucking yeah, like cool. He's, yeah, he's the coolest guy on uh, the planet, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he's the most humble ever and, like, would never, like, I don't know. He's just not like that at all. Did he walk up to you and say, hey, uh, I'm Leo. I was on two episodes of The Sons of Anarchy, babe. No, <laughs> that's, like, the opposite of what he <laughs> He didn't he, do that? People, people come up to him and he's like, no, that's not me. <laughs> I was never in that movie. Are you an actress? No. No? So let me ask you this. When, I mean, he, he says he hangs out with Larry Clark uh, once a week. He sees him once a week. I mean, do you, do you go uh, with Leo to, to hang out with Larry? And do you think that Larry, does, does Larry scare you at all? No. He's, so, he's like a dad. He's like Leo's like surrogate dad. He's super normal, nice. What do you guys uh, do when you go over there? You have like a turkey dinner? I mean, what, what happens at the I Clark household? I was surprised like how kind of... Um, I don't know, mellow he is, sort of. I don't know. He's not what I expected at all. He's Something like, bad physically happened to Larry, correct? Yeah, he just had surgery. Okay, we don't have to know what that was for, but <laughs> has he been taken out of the game artistically? I mean, I know he still takes photos, but not why doesn't he make movies anymore? No, I mean, Larry is like an artist artist. He's like, artists are obsessed right. with him and... He's one of the few artists that's actually been able to like make films that are successful. Right. Right, yeah, like, Leo was saying that like fil- like directing is like almost secondary to him. Yeah, I mean like what is, like Julian Schnabel tried to make movies and this one that one, but I think uh, Leo said don't diss anyone. I mean I like some of Julian's movies. I'm not dissing him, but I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he's okay. covering his ass. He's an artistic filmmaker. How about that? Did you like Basquiat? Yeah. Well, let him know. <laughs> you, just filmed a movie. you just finished the movie. Larry, Larry finished the movie. Oh, I didn't know. Larry just finished the movie. I didn't oh, know. Oh, did that. he really? And he's making. Now he's coming back to New York. And, and now, oh, right, he was in Paris making a movie. Now he's going to make another one. Yeah. Chrissy, ask Leo why. You know, I don't think he's been in, a, in any of Harmony movies. Is, is is it? I mean, how come he hasn't been in one of his films? I don't. I mean, I have no idea. What's I don't up know. with that, Leo? How come you haven't worked with Harmony? I don't know. 
I mean, we're friends, but we have a, a, a kind of a past. Really? I'm staying away from this. Bye. Oh, get up, get back over here, Leo. What's going on between what you and Harmon? Well, There's no harmony well, between you everyone, two. Everyone knows, everyone knows Harmony was a bit of a fuck up for a bu- couple of years. He's and right. No, but he's not a fuck up anymore. But he burned some people. And, like, I was yeah. one of those people. Burn, and like, burning people, like what, by talking about people publicly? I mean, what, what do you mean by burning? No, he was just like an idiot. Like, he, <laughs> he never did anything, like, officially to me. Well, sort of, but not really. But, like, you know, we're friends, but, you know, I think Harm really walks the line between being super artistic and super mainstream. And I don't know if I fall into either of those categories. So we've never worked together. Yes, yes or no. Have you ever read his novel, Leo? Yeah. What the which one? The one uh, the crack up at race ride. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And I think like- I think what Harmony does is great. I've no bad blood towards Harmony. Did you like Trash Uppers? Yes or no? I never saw it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I never watched Trash Uppers. Well, I never saw Wolf of Wall Street either. I, mean, <laughs> I don't got so much time in my day. You know? like, come on. Do you like Fair watching enough. movies? Yeah, but I prefer Pawn Stars. Oh, oh that's great. He's the... I like <laughs> watching like, shitty television, like cooking shows or the worst like true TV reality shows that aren't even reality. Do you miss Hoarders? Hoarders is a a little hard to watch because it's like oh. it's some it's real it's that's too real that's keeping it too yeah, real yeah, yeah, yeah. but oh like but you know like my i think the maybe the best show ever made is uh what's the the one with the auctions with the where people bring in their shit oh, oh yeah antique road show are you amazing <laughs> It's so fucking educational <laughs> and entertaining. And Leo ed- Fitzpatrick with a butt in his hand watching Antique Road. <laughs> yeah, he's not like watching anything that's like knocking down doors like Breaking Bad or The Sopranos. The you guy's had enough. Yeah, like, give me fucking hoarders. Toys. Never seen Breaking Bad, Sopranos, True Detective, The Wire. I've never seen any of never those. Never watched any. I mean, you were on The Wire. Yeah, exactly. Never. Well, I could see you. <laughs> it's, it's like that thing with that Groucho Park set. I would never be a part of a club that would have me as a <laughs> Fair enough. And on that note, let's say goodbye to Leo Max. He's been awesome, man. Thank uh, you. Thank you, guys. No, dude, thank you so much. You were awesome. Uh, I want to thank your agent, too, for, for uh, hooking us up, man. You were an absolute delight to talk to for the past 45 fucking minutes, dude. All right, let me know if you're ever in the Lower East Side. We'll go get a Budweiser. I, uh, oh, I totally will. Well, I'm over in New Jersey, dude, so I, I go up there sometimes. I got mad love for New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. All right, well, if hey, if you're ever in New Jersey, you let us know, Leo. All right, if I go to see my mom in Caldwell, I'll let you know. You got it, brother. All right. Leo, a- it's a real pleasure, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time. Chrissy was awesome, <laughs> and uh, just so cool. I could rap with you all night. Yeah, let's do it sometime. All right, man. All right. Thanks, Chrissy. Right. Good night, guys. All right. Bye-bye, Good night. Leo. All right. Be good. Oh, Max. Leo Fitzpatrick. You got to turn this off. <laughs> he doesn't know how to turn it off. He wants me. He's like, can I please turn this off? Get me out of here. Hang up, right? Ah, there you go. Be good. Leo Fitzpatrick, everybody. <laughs> Who I think we're about to talk to. Absolutely. Because I remember watching this fucker on old CKY videos. <laughs> oh, really? Back that far? Oh, yeah. Dude, totally. But listen, I've seen you get excited about Michael Berryman. I've seen you get excited about Pat Healy. How fuck? I mean, you basically, you could live, breathe, eat, sleep, Larry Clark and Harmony Kyrine movies. I mean, how fucking exciting is it right now to talk to Leo Fitzpatrick? Well, I'll tell you something, Tom. In uh, 1995, I was working as a street performer at Epcot Center, and they had an art theater out there called the Enzian. And I went out there one night because I was so miserable working as a street performer for Epcot, and I saw this film, Kids. It tore my asshole lining, and I'm watching this little fucking... So, Max, listen. I mean, hit me, Tom. I, I am going to hit you because I'm going to hit you with something good, dude. I want to tell you this. I know that we've had a, listen, we've had a lot of guests on the show. I mean, we've done 50-plus uh, episodes. We've had some extraordinary guests. 
And usually it's business as usual, because that's what we are here. We're business as usual. We're very business-oriented. We're very serious people. Well, no, we're not. But we, we've we had some guests, I think, from time to time that really strike our heart. That, like, it's not just like, oh, we're going to be talking to this actor, or we're going to be talking to this director, or we're talking to this writer, producer, whatnot. A, a, a couple of times a year, somebody comes on that it's like more than just having a guest. Am I correct? Are you telling me what I think you're telling me? Are we about to talk to Punk with gnarly teeth, black hair, with a skateboard and a big giant t-shirt? And I'm like, who is this kid? He's blowing my fucking head off. Dude. And I'll tell you something else. I have followed Fitzpatrick forever. Me too. And every time I see him, like on Sons of Anarchy or Carnival or... Damn, I watched Storytelling. I only saw it for the first time a a couple months ago. What? And, and I'm telling everyone about Fitzpatrick, and no one knows who the hell I'm talking about. Well, listen, he's worked with Larry Clark. He's worked with Todd Solondz. I mean, listen, the one thing, you and I are both big fans of Sons of Anarchy, Max. The only thing that Kurt Sutter has only, like, the only thing he's ever fumbled on that show is just putting this dude on for, for two episodes. <laughs> I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I, I say, fuck all this Larry Clark shit. We should just talk about Leo's two episode arc in Sons of Anarchy. Leo always has two episode arcs on shows. Not true. I think, dude, he ran uh, on the wire for a long time, right, Leo? Yeah. <laughs> he he was he was like on Wait, 14, is, 15 is, episodes. Can I interrupt? Is this introduction over yet? I don't know whether to be scared, flattered, or what. <laughs> Like, Definitely. We're just eating your balls right now. <laughs> no, because you say really nice things, and then you throw in fucked up teeth, and this is <laughs> uh, I just don't know where this is going. Hey, listen, Leo, hey, I saw... You consider handsome in your old age. Well, great. I got about 20 years left in me. I'll enjoy it. But Max, <laughs> listen, I saw kids, believe it or not, opening night in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. All right, I heard about this movie, and I'm like, I have to see this. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't know how I was in this theater with, like, six other people on opening night to see kids, and I saw it with two chicks, my girlfriend at the time and her really hot Puerto Rican friend. And we watched this movie, and after the movie's over, these two girls are just talking about how much they were in love with Leo Fitzpatrick's chin. They're like, that telly is just so hot. And I'm just watching this movie, and I'm like, listen, this guy's a scumbag. I'm like, how, how could you find anything uh, at all attractive about this character? Leo, they, they loved you. They loved I, you. They thought you were beautiful. It's because I'm from West Orange, New Jersey. That's they felt the connection. They felt the connection. <laughs> That's right. That's right, man.